You'll often hear port address translation referred to as overloading, and what PAT does, and where the overloading term comes from, is that we are overloading a single routable address because PAT allows the private IP addresses of inside hosts, note the multiple there, the plural, to be translated to a single routable address. So we only need one address instead of multiples, and even better, we can use the address that's already in use on the outside interface, which in this case is going to be, we know, 172.12.123.1. Now, how do we perform this magic? Well, the private address is translated to a combination of that single IP address and port number, and that allows the same routable IP address to be used by multiple inside hosts for NAT. PAT's easy to configure, too. We're going to do it from the beginning. I did take the commands off from the previous lab because I want you to see them all, but we're going to need an ACL again. Of course, we need our inside and outside commands, and one single word in the IPNet inside command puts PAT into action. And let's go ahead and make that happen. Let's call up router one here. And what are we gonna do first? See, you curse me for this now. <laughs> you may not curse me, but you might say, oh man, he's already shown us that twice, you know. But one day, when I learned to spell the word inside, and one day, you're gonna be putting that in on a live router or in the exam, and Say, man, I remember Chris Bryant just bugged the heck out of me about that. Let's write the access list. Okay, let's see what happened there. So far, so good. We've got our inside and outside interfaces identified. We have our ACL. We don't need to create a pool because we're not using a pool. So now we just need the IP NAT inside command. Let's look at our options there again. We're translating source address. We are going to name an access list. We are going to identify ACL2. And I told you we might see that specify interface for global addresses choice in action. That's what we're going to use here because this identifies the outside address. Now, now the term makes sense, right? The description specify interface for global address one, where the pool is named the pool of global address says. So we've got interface there, and then the expected humongous list of interfaces, which we don't need to do. And didn't I say something about a single word we need to use here somewhere? Overload is the one. Overload and address translation. And this is also why we call it overloading. And we have some options after that, definitely for future studies. You may never bump into those. And I think we're done. IP net inside source list two. But now we're calling the interface, serial 010. That's the ad interface whose address we're going to use. And we are overloading. So let's try some of that overloading. Let's send a ping to 172.12.123.2 with a source of 10.112. Looks good. And check this out. So our inside global address is 172.12.123.1, port number 8. And that's mapped to inside local 10112. And you see again the inside local, excuse me, outside local and outside global are the same because we're not using that on that end. You also see ICMP mentioned under pro for protocol. It's really easy to miss that because it looks like it's pro inside global and it's really just pro here for protocol. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and send one from 22 because that will be the real proof. Oh, went a little fast there. There we go. Goes right through. And check it out. So now we're using the same inside global address. That's and we're already using it on the serial interface. Really can't beat that. It's the port numbers that differentiate the combinations. So uh, that that's really port address translation. You can put a lot of ports on there. I've seen different maximums, but they're they're all really high. So it's not like you can do this 50 times and run out of port numbers but you probably will not bump into that ceiling anytime soon on your network and certainly not on the lap. But that is Pat in action. I wanted to show you one more command before we move on to the next section about NAT. And it's show IP NAT statistics or just show IP NAT stat. It's a great way to remember it. And this is going to show you how many active translations you have the peak number of translations you've had, 
and some other helpful information. And note here when it says peak translations four occurred 26 minutes ago, that's when I was working with STAT, with SNAT and with dynamic NAT. So it kept up with all of that information. And right now it's telling you, well, I've got one dynamic translation, one extended, uh, peak translations four, shows you your outside interfaces right now, because I believe if I run show IP NAT trans, yep, they're all gone now. So let's run it now. It'll probably show, yeah, while, we're, while I was talking, they all died out, so to speak. So right now, show IP NAT set shows that we don't have any active translations. It shows your peak number of translations and your outside interface if you're using PAT. It's also going to show you your inside interfaces. There's more information about some dynamic mappings here. You can see dynamic mappings. Also, the number of expired translations. We've had eight expire on us now. Dynamic mappings inside source, and here's even the line, access list two, and then the interface. So let's go ahead and send another ping there. And then I'll show IP net stat. And you'll notice that it's saying one dynamic, one extended, because it is a di it's still technically dynamic. It's not dyna what we refer to as dynamic NAT, but it's a dynamic entry, and it is an extended entry because we are using port address translation. So again, the peak number of translations gives you right there how long ago it was. Outside interfaces, helpful information there. Your inside interface is very helpful information there. And then some information on expired translations and what your dynamic mappings even are. So again, NAT, PAT, both very straightforward stuff. Watch your inside and outside commands and your syntax on that IP NAT inside command and you will nail every question on the exam. That's enough for NAT and PAT right now. Let's move on to another subject and I'll see you on the next video.